Hello all, welcome back to the channel. This is Ganesh for Agnesoft. I hope you are all doing great today. In this video, we will take a look at the fascinating world of IT infrastructure, right from what is IT infra, what is its purpose, why do we need them, and its overall evolution. So sit back, make some notes, let's dive in. All right. Before we discuss what is IT infrastructure, have you ever thought what powers our modern digital world? How does your banking app work and show only your account details? How is WhatsApp able to store billions of messages and transact them so smoothly? Or all of your Google services work at a single click? Gmail, Drive, Photos, Maps, etc. Without which everything would come to an halt. So it is pivotal for us to understand that the modern digital world is powered by a robust, scalable, highly available, fault-tolerant and disaster recoverable infrastructure. So what is IT infrastructure? At its core, IT infrastructure is a collection of hardware, software and networking components that enable an enterprise to process, store and transmit data using application logic. More like building blocks for supporting business operations and providing essential services. The key components of infrastructure include hardware components such as servers, computers and networking devices, software components that include your operating systems, applications and middlewares, networking gear such as load balancers, firewalls, routers, etc. Facilities, predominantly a physical space which provides redundant cooling and redundant power supply for all of these components to function optimally. Let us now brief about the hardware components of infrastructure. What is a server? Server is a powerful computer designed to provide data, services or resources to other devices, typically a client over a network. Servers host applications, store data and facilitate communications within and outside of IT infrastructure. There can be multiple types of servers. It could be a bare metal or a hardware based physical server or it could be a software based virtual server. Components of a physical server CPU Brain of the server that executes all the instructions. Typically, high performance CPUs such as Intel Xeon and AMD Epic are optimized for multitasking and handling complex computations. RAM or memory Temporary storage for active data and applications. Servers typically have large amounts of RAM that handle multiple processes simultaneously. Storage long-term data storage for persistent data. This can either be a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. Typically, hard disk drives are cost effective, larger capacity, but slower in performance. These are made up of magnetic drives and spindles. Solid state drives on the other hand are faster performance, more reliable, but much more expensive in nature. The next component is the motherboard. The central circuit board connecting all of these components. These include slots for CPUs, memory and storage devices and network cards. Next is the network interface card. These NIC cards enable communication between the server and the other devices over a network. Typically server geared NIC cards are of 10 Gbps or 100 Gbps or even more. Power supply unit. Converts electricity from an outlet into an usable power for server components. Designed for reliability and redundancy to ensure uptime. Cooling systems. These include fans, heat sinks or liquid cooling material to maintain optimal temperatures. These are very essential for preventing hardware failure due to overheating. Chassis Typically, a physical enclosure that houses all of these server components is called as a chassis. Racks or towers are the ones hosting these chassis depending upon the type of server that we configure. Operating system Software that manages all of these hardware resources and enables applications to run on them. These could be Windows Server, Linux, etc. Now let's talk about Switch. Switch is a networking device that connects devices within a local area network. It uses packet switching to forward data to the connect destination device, ensuring efficient communication between the connected devices like computers and servers. The components of a physical switch include ports. The physical interfaces where the Ethernet cable or the fiber channel cable are plugged into. These ports can be of gigabit Ethernet that is 1 Gbps or it could be 10 Gbps or even it could be 40 or more Gbps. Switch fabric. 
the internal circuitry that processes and forwards the data packets between these ports. This determines the switch speed, performance and throughput. The switch also comes with a CPU that manages the control plane tasks like routing, management and configuration of the switch itself. These CPUs are also responsible for handling the administrative tasks and maintaining the switch operating system. The switch comes in with an internal memory to store the temporary data including the forwarding table and active configurations. It stores the operating system and firmware details as well. It also has an NVRAM configuration that persists across the reboots. Power supply provides power to the switch. The enterprise switches may include redundant power supply for reliability. It also comes with built-in heat sinks to prevent overheating during continuous operations. It is very essential for switches in data centers or high performance environments to have proper cooling grades for switches as well. Black plane. The back plane is responsible for internal communication pathway between the ports. The LED and indicators provide visual cues for status monitoring such as port activity, speed, power statuses and errors etc. Management interface allows administrators to configure and monitor the switch. This could be either a console port that is a serial port for direct access or it could be a web interface or a CLI for remote management. Now let's talk about storage. Storage refers to systems encompassing multiple drives that save digital data for the use by computers and applications. It can be directly attached, network based or a part of larger storage infrastructure. Storage is categorized by its capacity, speed and accessibility. Examples include hard disk drives, SSDs and large scale storage systems like NAS or SAN systems. Component of storage system. A physical server that includes storage related components that manage data efficiently include disks. Typically the disk can be of three different types. It could be hard disk drive that includes spinning disks and stores data magnetically, high capacity but slower read and write speeds, hence less performance, solid state drives. These flash based storage have no moving part in them, hence faster in performance and more durable but costlier than the hard disk drives. For those environments that require superior performance, NVMe drives are recommended. These are ultra fast SSDs connected to the compute and storage systems via PCIe interface cards. Next comes the RAID controller. The RAID controller provides high performance as well as provide redundancy for individual drives. These can be of different types, RAID 0, striping for performance, RAID 1, mirroring for redundancy, Usually an enterprise RAID would be configured in RAID 5 or RAID 6, which combines both performance and redundancies. Next comes the disk base. Physical slots in the server chassis where the storage drives are installed. Servers typically allow hot swappable base for ease of maintenance. That is, if one of the hard disk or an SSD drive fails, it can be easily swapped with a new one. Storage controller, a hardware or a software component that manages communication between CPU and the storage drives. This may support advanced features like caching or encryption. Now let's talk about power supply. A typical storage system includes multiple power supplies that is redundant power supply and these can be hot swappable. That is if one of the power supply units fails, it can be readily swappable. The physical servers may have these drives attached to them directly or they may connect to an external storage over the network. The external storage could be of network attached storage that is NAS, a file level storage accessible over the network or it could be a storage area network, basically in high speed block level storage. The key takeaway from the hardware components of IT infrastructure is that a physical server, switch or a storage device is purpose built for reliability, scalability and continuous operation, making it the building block of the IT infrastructure. All right. Having understood what is IT infrastructure, now let us take a look at some of the most impactful milestones in the evolution of IT infrastructure. Mainframes Mainframes were the first large-scale computing systems designed for centralized data processing. They were massive, expensive and primarily used by governments and large corporations. The key features of mainframes was that it was a, for centralized computing and mainly used for batch processing for tasks such as payroll management, inventory management, data processing, etc. 
Mainframes led the foundation for modern computing by introducing the concept of centralized data processing. The introduction of personal computers revolutionized the IT infrastructure by decentralizing the computing power and making it accessible to small businesses and individuals. The key features was that it was very affordable and compact in nature, unlike mainframes that filled up the entire room. With user-friendly interfaces such as Microsoft Windows and Apple's Macintosh, these standalone systems democratized computing, enabling widespread adoption and innovation in the software development. During the early 1980s, a new form of distributed computing called client-server model was widely adopted. The client-server model introduced distributed computing, where servers are providing resources and services to client devices over a network. The key feature of the client-server architecture is a separation of tasks between clients and servers. This enabled a plethora of new applications such as file sharing, email, databases. This was popularized by the technologies such as Novell's Netware, Microsoft's Windows Server. This architecture improved scalability, efficiency and hence becoming the backbone of enterprise IT systems. Another massive milestone was the introduction of ESXi by VMware. Virtualization allowed multiple virtual machines to run on a single physical server, optimizing resource utilization and reducing costs. The key feature of virtualization is that it enabled decoupling of hardware and software systems, thereby improving availability and scalability. VMware's ESXi and Microsoft's Hyper-V was some of the most famous hypervisors in the industry. Virtualization transformed data centers, enabling business to consolidate IT infrastructure and in turn saving huge costs on CapEx. With Amazon introducing S3, shifted the entire IT infrastructure from an on-premise to a remote data center over the internet offering on-demand access to computing resources. This also changed the way infrastructure was built from a traditional on-premise architecture to a cloud-native service-oriented architecture. The key feature of cloud computing was its capability for scaling, flexibility and cost efficiency with respect to capex. Cloud computing also introduced three different models that is the way we consume these services. It could be infrastructure, platform or software as a service. The major providers for cloud computing are Amazon's AWS, Microsoft's Azure and Google Cloud Platform. Cloud computing has become the cornerstone of modern IT, enabling innovations like AI, IoT and big data analytics. Generative AI with tools like ChatGPT, Cloud and other similar models are reshaping the IT infrastructure in profound ways. Its impact spans across hardware requirements, software optimization, operational efficiency and future innovations. Let us take a look at the Gen AI's immediate impact on IT infra. In order to handle massive data sets, training and inferencing these large language models, Gen AI requires significantly higher computing power than the normal applications. This is now seeing an increase in demand for high performance infrastructure like GPUs, TPUs, NVMe storage and high performance networking. Gen AI introduces intelligent automation, reduces manual intervention in IT operations such as predictive maintenance, dynamic resource allocation, self-healing systems, to name a few. Gen AI is not just a tool but a transformative force pushing IT infra towards greater intelligence, efficiency and adaptability.